100% mortgages are coming to the UK. 100% mortgages, the first 100% mortgage. Absolute and total nonsense. Sit down if you've got student debt of less than 20,000 pounds. No one sat down. Then we'll actually give you a mortgage based on the last six months of your uh, rent payments. You've paid the deposit for the house, except you ain't got the house. <laughs> no. The opposite, my friends. The quality of your life will be determined by the quality of the questions that you ask. Don't sit there with your £100,000 student loan and your entitlement culture telling me that someone else should have told you about 100% student mortgages. 100% mortgages are coming to the UK. Well, they've been here quite a long time, actually. In this week's edition of oh, Money Matters, because you know, I believe that money truly does matter. To well, what is a 100% mortgage? It's actually a fascinating thing. It means you can get 100% lending, you can get 100% mortgage against a house or a flat. The average house in the UK at the moment, or sorry, the average home in the UK, which could be a flat or an apartment, uh, is around about 280, uh, 8,000, I think. Let's call it 300, shall we, between friends. And normally, if you want to go and buy a property to live in, you can get 5% deposit, you can get 10% deposit. So let's call it 10%. You would need to come up with a £30,000 deposit. If, however, you use Skipton's new 100% mortgage, you don't need any deposit. And the thing that most first-time buyers say stops them from buying a property is all those years of saving up. So they've got £30,000 in cash so they can put it down and so they can move into their home. Well, what Skipton's just done, if you've got a good record as a renter and you haven't missed any payments or anything, then we'll actually give you a mortgage based on the last six months of your uh, rent payments. Because their logic is, well, if you can afford to pay rent of, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 pounds a month, well, why couldn't you equally afford to pay a mortgage of 1,000, 2,000 pounds a month? First, I want to share with you, this with you. All the newspaper headlines, everyone's blaring, 100% mortgages, the first 100% mortgage. Absolute and total nonsense. There's been 100% mortgages for a lot of years. Even when Skipton launched it, there were 15, one five other 100% mortgages on the UK market. It's kind of interesting in the sense that it's specifically about renters becoming homeowners, but it's certainly not unique as to being a 100% mortgage. So I want to take you back a few years. My first degree is engineering, and then I've got an MBA, a master's in business administration. Sometimes I'll get invited into university because they like talking to uh, you know, entrepreneurs, but I'm unusual in the sense that the first 20 years of my career, I worked for blue chip, big FTSE 100 companies. And by the time I was 36, I was offered, well, I took the job of being managing director of a two and a half billion pound company. The first bit of my career was like working for someone else, more and more senior, got on the board, got to be the managing director. Universities quite often like talking to me because I've got the big company blue chip experience, got the MBA, read Kotler and all the other management textbooks, but I've also got the ground up experience of starting many, many companies now from nothing. And they like the entrepreneur stroke big company person. So I was talking to about 200 students. They were business studies students and they just really want, it wasn't a presentation, it was more of a Q&A. How have you done this? How have you done that? And so I asked the question, well, how did you get Start. I said, well, I bought my first flat, which is true, 269A, Roman Road, East Ham, for £9,000. And that same flat today uh, is worth more than £400,000. Property has always been at the core of my wealth. So yes, I've done other jobs at the same time. And to begin with, maybe, you know, property was on the side and then property became the main thing and the job went on the side and, you know, and so on. But they said to me, they said, oh yeah, but you couldn't do that now. And it was in quite a challenging way and there were two or three of them saying it. So I thought, all right, well, these were master's students, master's degree students. So I thought, okay, they're not children. They've got first degrees. They ought to be able to hold an argument. So I decided to give it to them, both barrels. What I'd like you to do is, would you mind all standing up? So they all stood up. Can you please sit down if you've got student debt of less than 20,000 pounds? No one sat down. I said, okay, sit down if your student debt is less than 30,000 pounds. One or two of them sat down and I carried on. 40, 50, 60. By the time I got to 60,000 pounds, there was a good few sitting down, but not all of them. And then I got to 80, 90, I got to 100,000 pounds. And because this was their second degree, <laughs> I 
I don't know them because they were pretty crazy with money, I suppose. Some of them told me that they had debts, student debts, other debts, loans off their mum and whatever, of more than £100,000. And then they all sat down. That's okay, thank you for that. So here's the thing that occurs to me. All of you sound like you've spent 40, 50 grand and you've got a 40, 50 grand debt. Most of you are at 60 or 70. Some of you are at over 100. Do you know what that sounds like to me, ladies and gentlemen? That sounds like to me, you've paid the deposit for the house, except you ain't got the house. And there was some uncomfortable shuffling in the seats. And so that's point number one. Point number two, you have no excuse. Why did each and every one of you, you're in business studies, you're doing various business degrees. Why did each and every one of you not buy a property using a 100% student mortgage? And then one or two of the brave ones said, oh yeah, but we can't do that now. You used to do that when you were young. <laughs> no, the opposite, my friend. And then I said to them, get your phones out. Google 100% student mortgage. They use some rude words. They were like, says here you can get 100% student mortgage. <laughs> yeah, why didn't anyone tell us? <laughs> You're master's degree students. When are you actually gonna grow the intelligence and common sense required to ask the questions for yourself? At what age do you grow up? And they're like, what? I said, do you know one of the most valuable lessons that I've ever learned? Learned and earned, same thing. The quality of your life will be determined by the quality of the questions that you ask. You're all supposed to be doing research now and you couldn't even research a 100% student mortgage. Are you serious? Don't sit there with your 100,000 pound student loan and your entitlement culture telling me that someone else should have told you about 100% student mortgages. You could have done this five years ago. You could have done it 10 years ago. But the more important question is, what can you do now? Because if you live your life in the past, that's just regrets and bitterness. You live your life in the future, that's just called dreaming. You live your life now, that's called achievement. So my question to you is, now that I've given you that information, what are you gonna do with it? If you wanted to get 100% student mortgage, everybody out there in video land, and I won't be quite as tough with you as I was with those master's degree students because they're master's degree students. They're supposed to be able to hold an argument. Do you like the idea of either going to university or being a parent that helps one of their children go to university and them getting a 100% student mortgage? And if you're thinking, well, that's fine, Paul, but I'm not a student, okay. So if you're not a student, do this for me in internet land. Can you just Google Barclays Springboard Mortgage? And I'm not gonna take you through all 15 of the other products, but here's the home screen for the Barclays Springboard Mortgage. And as you can see here, it clearly says that they will give you a 100% deposit. Now, as is often the case, there are some conditions. And in this case, the conditions are probably the bank of mum and dad, but you know, whoever, Auntie Gladys, your brother, whoever, puts on deposit some money. Now that money isn't the deposit for the property, it's just a form of security. It's them vouching for you. And as long as you, the home owner, the home buyer, pays your mortgage on time, after a certain number of years, they get their money back. And all the time that the money's been with Barclays, they've been earning interest and you know, whatever. And I'm not saying that you gotta go and do that. But what I am saying, is very often when you see the trumpets and the noise and the blare in the newspapers or whatever maybe I'm just getting jaundiced maybe I'm just getting to that age where I haven't seen it all before but I've seen quite a lot of things before and one thing I've certainly seen before is 100% mortgages they ain't new so these new 100% mortgages might be fantastic but they're not new I really want to know what you think about 100% student mortgages. You can't do that. Why didn't somebody else tell us? And when do we grow up? But specifically, what I wanna know is if somebody brought you a deal that said first charge security, 10% a year, would you invest your money? Because if the answer to that is yes, you've just proven my point. And my core point with everything to do with property investment is the thing that there's a shortage of is not money. I'll tell you where there's the only shortage of money in the world, in your head. That's the only place. If you get good at finding deals and those deals work, the money will come. I know that with absolute certainty from talking to all the millionaires and billionaires that I meet here in Monaco. As soon as they learn that I'm a property investor, they want one thing from me. They want deals. Get good at finding deals, at structuring deals. You don't need money. Now, on the other hand, if you can't be bothered to do all of that because becoming wealthy is far too much like hard work and after all, you need to spend eight or 10 hours a week doing it. If you can't be bothered, nearly used a rude word, then that's fine. Go and get your 100% mortgage. Only if you've decided I can't be bothered 
to be wealthy. I have limited ambition. I just want to be the same as everybody else. Yes, I'd like a home. What I'm then going to do is try and pay off the mortgage and then I'm going to retire. Do you know what that's called? That's called the 40, 40, 40. Do you know what those three 40s are for? 40 hours a week, 40 years of your life to retire on 40% of what you couldn't afford to live on in the first place. That is where you're going to end up. If you want to join the 1%, then deposit free mortgages, 100% mortgages, they're not really relevant. They're for the masses. If you want to be part of the 1% that totally and utterly change their lives, learns to ask questions, doesn't go and do a master's degree and ends up with 100K in student debt and ask stupid questions like, why didn't somebody tell me? If that is absolutely not for you, please come and join us at Touchstone Education. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to hit links and all the other stuff because you got a brain, you can ask the questions, you can come and find us. All right, that's it for this week's edition of Money Matters. I hope you found that useful. My name's Paul Smith. You have been absolutely wonderful, and I'll see you next time.